Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds, to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. from Starfleet, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. The Enterprise will proceed to the Alpha Proxima system. While the indigenous race on Proxima 3 has not reached a technological level commensurate with entering the Federation, and therefore under the protection of the Prime Directive of non-interference, we do maintain a discrete monitoring satellite. It has picked up activity from an asteroid in an elliptical orbit. You are to investigate without interfering with life on the planet. According to the library computer, the Alpha Proxima system has five planets and an asteroid belt. A large asteroid is heading towards the inner planets and should pass close by Proxima 3. It passes through the interior of the system once every 200 years. The people of Proxima 3 call it Scythe, the same name as their god of war. God of War, Mr. Spock? Isn't that a bit surprising from a people whose technology matches 20th century Earth? Considering the level of warfare during that century, I'm surprised that it is Earth that did not have a God of War. In any case, about a millennium ago, Proxima III suffered a globally devastating war. Blew themselves back to the Stone Age, Mr. Spock? Late Bronze Age, Ensign. They rebuilt their world in half the time it had taken to get there originally. But the Armageddon was mythologized as a battle between the Sofs and Lucas. In that war, the planet was raised, and all the gods died except Sai. He had rained fury down upon the world, then went off on a long dance of victory. His return is a time for worldwide soul-searching and atonement. And Scythe returns, and our monitoring station picks up activity. It would seem that we should proceed to Alpha Proxima and scan Scythe. Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek 25th Anniversary Edition. So, we've got a lot to research, so we'll get started with that right away. Library computer, tell me about Alpha Proxima. Alpha Proxima. Star system with five planets. Alpha Proxima 3. Proxtra. And Alpha Proxima 4. Gazel are both inhabited worlds. Huh, interesting. Okay, let's start with, uh, Proxima. Topic no- oh, So, Proxtray? Proxtray. The third planet in the Alpha Proxima system. This Class M planet is widely habitable except for zones of extreme radioactivity on the southern continent. About 1,000 years ago, the two dominant political systems, the Lugers and the Sovs, engaged in a nuclear war that resulted in the deaths of three-quarters of the world's population through direct or collateral damage. Proxtray's current civilization is non-spacefaring and does not have contact with the Federation. Non-spacefaring, so you could probably assume they're at a 1940s level of technology. Seems reasonable. Somewhere between that and 1900s, given that Spock said it was early 20th century and that they haven't achieved space yet, which would be 1950s. Um, so let's quick look at Gazel. Gazel, a Class M world in the Alpha Proxima system, Alpha Proxima 4, a member of the Federation and a popular leisure world. 
Gazel is also a major center for galactic archaeology and has many museums. Well, that's awkward. I mean, that basically guarantees that we're going to make contact with them or that they'll discover us well before they achieve will arrive. Is all they need to do is get to a mid 20th century level of development. Uh, 1960s, 1970s, just developed enough to send probes to other planets in their system. And, uh, surprise! We've got an outpost in your system. <coughs> in any case, let's uh, start looking at the Softs and Lucas. Softs. One of the two ancient races of Proxtray. They lived in a highly advanced culture that valued the community ahead of the individual which put them in conflict with the Lucers. The Softs used base 4 in their mathematics, and their organization was based on units of 4 to make up sets of 100. Interesting, so the Softs were basically commies, so let's look up the Lucers then. Lucers. One of the two ancient cultures of Proxtra. See Softs. The Lookers believed that a man who made the most of his ability was a god. Their individualism put themselves at odds with the communitarianism of the Softs. The Lookers used base 3. Their organization was based on units of 3, making up sets of 99. The number 99 was known to have religious importance to them. Okay, so 99 was a very important number for the Lucas. Uh, do, 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 do. Base 3. The mathematical basis for the Luger culture. There are three numbers in base 3. 0, 1, and 2. Thus 3 in base 3 is 1, 0. 4 is 1, 1. 5 is 1, 2. 6 is two zero nine is one zero zero seventeen is one two two and ninety nine is one zero two zero zero base four the mathematical basis for the soft's culture there are four numbers in base four zero one two and three Thus, 4 in base 4 is 1, 0, 7 is 1, 3, 8 is 2, 0, 12 is 3, 0, and 16 is 1, 0, 0. Okay. So we got an idea of both systems, and now let's look up that moon, Scythe. Scythe. A large asteroid in an elliptical orbit in the Alpha Proxima system. Spectral analysis of its composition indicates that it has minimal atmosphere, and that it was once a moon of the planet Proxtra, hurled out of its orbit by a catastrophe. The 17th letter of the Luger alphabet is named Scythe, probably not by coincidence. I think that's about it for what we can uh, research there. So, uh, Mr. Spock, do you have any comments? Nothing to report at this time, Captain. Alright, so let me figure out where my map went. Ah, there it is. So, Alpha Proxima System. Mr. Sulu, if you would so kindly set course. <laughs> Mr. Spock, sensor ratings. We are out of sensor range, Captain. I suggest we orbit the asteroid. Uhura, open the hail. I am picking up primitive radio broadcast from Proxima 3, sir, but nothing from sight. Okay, so they do have radio broadcasts that would probably play some sometime between the uh, 1920s and 1940s. Mr. Sulu, if you could establish standard orbit, if you please. Better in standard orbit. Mr. Spock, 
sensor readings. A sensor scan of Psi reveals surface features consistent with damage left by a nuclear attack. It would seem to have been a target during Proxima's war. Psi rained fury down on the planet and then left on a dance of victory. A missile base, Captain? It would seem to make sense. Captain, I just monitored a narrow beam message from Scythe to Proxima 3. I don't have it all. I just caught a bit of the initial burst. I'm attempting a translation, but it appears to be a computer code. Any response from the planet? The Proxtrites will not have the equipment necessary to understand and reply to that code for another 25.6 years at their present rate of development. What did you say? I suggest we beam down, sir. The surface is hostile, but survivable for a short time. Still translating, Captain. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Wrong person there, but uh, let's look up. Topic not. Topic not. Topic not. It. Topic. Topic not. Topic. Looks like we can't look up uh, the weapon system. So with that. I don't think there's anything else to discuss, so prepare and wait. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. Captain, Mr. Scott wishes to speak with you. Mr. Scott? Hi, we've had some slight problems with the transporters. We didn't notice anything beaming down. Just a glitch in the main transporter program. Mr. Kyle is loading a back up and we're performing tests. The transporters will be down for about an hour. That will still give us plenty of time, Scotty. I know. I have the lads in engineering doing a complete overhaul of the ship systems. Good, Mr. Scott. I'll keep you posted. Kirk out. There are many rocks here. This moon has a thin but breathable atmosphere. Dr. Leonard McCoy, knowing that they aren't likely to encounter any medical problems, is rather annoyed about being dragged yet again into the transporter. Ensign Mosier seems to be rather curious about the planet's technology. Mr. Spock looks forward to examining the technology of this ancient culture. James T. Kirk worried about the safety of the people of Proxtray. This is the planet Proxtray currently 600,000 kilometers from this moon. There are many rocks. This looks like a heavy-duty security door built into the side of a hill on this moon. All right, we got some creepy atmosphere, certainly. What do you make of this bones? The atmosphere is breathable, Jim, but hardly nourishing. We should either get inside or go back to the ship. Area secure, Captain. Aside from the security door on what should be a lifeless planetoid, this place is unremarkable. He doesn't seem to be in a talkative mood right now. Oh, Kirk, you're never talkative. McCoy, uh, can you take some readings on us, make sure we're okay? It's what I was afraid of, Jim. The thin atmosphere of this moon doesn't provide enough protection from cosmic rays. We shouldn't stay here any more than a few hours. There's nothing there... Re it's what I was afraid okay, of. so he gives the same response. No matter what, Mr. Spock, can we get some readings? I cannot get readings from this range, Captain. But if we do not hurry, there will be nothing left to get a reading on. Why would you say that, Mr. Spock? Unremarkable, except for low-grade power emanations from the door area. As expected, Captain, the source of power emanations lies beyond that door. A power source that has lasted millennia and endured major catastrophes. That's fascinating, Mr. Spock. Do you have Vulcan blood, Ensign? No, sir. Well, we may as well be throwing McCoy to... It's what I was afraid of, Jim. Readings of everyone. It's what I was afraid of. Okay. So can we pick up all these rocks? You retrieve a rock. Cool. Alright, well, let's walk over to the security door, then. I'm afraid we got a wee problem here. What is it, Scotty? There is some sort of virus in the main computer. Our phasers and tractor beams have been disabled, and there's no way we're getting them back in three hours. There goes our backup plan. Do what you can, Mr. Scott. Aye, I will, Captain. I may yet have a trick or two that I can pull, but don't count on any miracles. Isolate that virus. That's your number one priority. That it is, Captain. We'll keep you informed. Squad out. Ah. 
Uh, all you gotta do is isolate it, wipe it, and restore backups from... and restore from a backup of the main computer. Jeez. <laughs> Star Trek's always been very bad with dealing with computer viruses. I mean, that was basically an entire episode of The Next Generation was, oh, we need to reformat the computer and load a backup. <laughs> but, um... Apparently dealing with viruses is a lost art of the 21st century that the 23rd century and 24th century have forgotten. In any case, time to look around. Built into the rock is a very large door. This heavy-duty door has taken numerous micrometeorite strikes but still appears solid. Well, is that all they are? A lens sits above the doorway, but is it mere decoration? It looks like some sort of display panel. This is a keypad that looks functional. This heavy-duty door... James T. Kirk, a man with a problem. A big problem that is getting bigger. It never ceases to amaze you how passive Spock can be, even in the presence of extraordinary wonders. McCoy is examining himself for cosmic radiation sickness symptoms. Ensign Mosier is glad to be a member of this landing party, at least for now. Okay, so... Let's see, let's talk to people. The origin point for the broadcast to Uhura Monitor was approximately 50 meters beyond this door. We should stay inside as much as possible. We must try to protect ourselves from the cosmic radiation. This door is huge! If they were humanoid, they could have been giants. From what we know about the Lukers, they had an affinity for size. Their machines weren't just equipment, they were also monuments. I can believe that. So it's likely that this is a Luker base then. Well, we won't be able to phaser any outbound missiles. It appears that our mission has increased in importance. But wouldn't the base have launched all their missiles in the first strike? I guess we'll find out when we get in. All right, McCoy. Tricor readings, how are we doing? No appreciable cosmic radiation damage. Yet. No appreciable... No appreciable... No appreciable... Co All right, good. Mr. Spot, tricorder readings? Unremarkable. Unremarkable. This appears to be a dust-covered lens of some sort. The door still appears to be in operating condition. Working display panel, Captain. There is power running to the keypad. Then let's, uh, Mr. Spock, can you, uh, hack the keypad? Mode. Well, we know that the only number we really know is that they had a holy number of 99, so let's try that. That did not seem to work, Captain. Perhaps we should try a number that had some significance to them. Remember... But they use base. Well, it's base 3, so 99 and base 3, the computer told us, was 10 200. Ah, that worked. I see you deduced that 10200 in the Lucre's base 3 was equal to their sacred number 99. Let's contact the ship, see how they Your situation, Mr. Scott. We're still looking for the virus, Captain. I even have Lieutenant Uhura looking through the computer system. I never realized the last was so good with them. Check her record, Mr. Scott. She was in the top 10% of her class in computer systems analysis. We'll find that virus soon, Captain, or I'm an Englishman. Just do your best, Scotty. Kirk out. Let's look this here. appears to be some sort of security lock. This appears to be some sort of... Okay, so... corner rings, Mr. Spock. A security lock, Captain. Nothing happens. Okay, just want to make sure there weren't lasers that were going to kill us or anything. Alright. Report, Scotty. How are things going? About as badly as a killed in a blast furnace, Captain. Wait a minute. Lieutenant Nuhura has some news for you. The virus came from our sensor sweep of the moon's computers. We believe we have analyzed the memory sectors it attacked. Well done, Uhura. I wish I could take credit for it. It was Mr. Kyle who found the pattern. We are attacking it with antivirus programs. Computer science sounds more like medicine every day. 
If we had a doctor as good with computers as you are with patients, we'd be having a lot fewer problems. Finally, someone who appreciates me. Keep working at it, Uhura. Kirk out. Okay, sorry. It was, uh... This looks like some kind of security lock with heavy duty doors on both ends. Making some notes out. This looks like some kind of security lock with heavy duty doors on both ends. This looks like some kind of security lock with heavy duty doors on both ends. The door has some strange right. This looks like some kind of Alright, thank you. Uh, let's see. Thoughts, everyone? The Lucras did not seem to have a problem with security. My tricorder is picking up large supplies of frozen oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide beneath the surface. Enough to last many centuries. At least we won't have to worry about suffocating. Okay, so... This place does seem to provide protection against cosmic rays. I don't see why they bothered putting an atmosphere here, Captain. There hasn't even been bacteria here in centuries, let alone humanoids. We appear to be in some type of security lock. No defensive systems are apparent here, but considering the size of the doors, they probably don't need them. Alright, try corner readings, Mr. Spock. This door is similar to the one on the outside of the secure lock, except that it has not weathered over the years. Electrical panels indicate the keypad on the right controls the door. This keypad is fully functional and controls the door. Its entry code is in base 3. A keypad in base 3. Thank you, Mr. Spock. McCoy, medical readings. All readings are normal. The structure seems to be protecting us from the cosmic rays. And looks like he's going There's to nothing there re say that about all of us. There's nothing there required. Excellent. So. A computer terminal. Each word in the Lucre language has three aspects. Submissive, neutral, and aggressive to supply connotation to their language. Write that down. Spock, see what you can do with this. The console reports the following. Welcome to Orbital Missile Base. Codename, Psy. This base has been operational for the past week. It has completed one successful fire mission. Estimation of success is at 22 over 100. 22 percent? That's very low. Hardly something to brag about. Doctor, in base 3, 22 divided by 100 is equivalent to 8 out of 9, or 88 percent. I would think that quite satisfactory, given this base's probable mission of destroying the soft forces on Proxtree. It says the base has been operational for a week, but this has been here for a thousand years. If the Lukers built this base with a clock that told the time by measuring the moon's rotational speed, or the gravitational forces generated by Proxtree and the sun, the computer may have calculated only a week of time has passed since its first action. I might be able to learn more with another look at the console. There is a substantial amount of data here, but in summary, Scythe was created by the Lukers as a launching platform for missiles to keep the Softs subjugated to their influence. The Softs managed to infiltrate the base. However, their actions triggered Scythe's auto-attack mechanisms and initiated a holocaust that nearly annihilated the planet. One soft strike did, in fact, hit the moon and deflected it from its orbit. It has been dormant since then. So why is the base been activated again? Given the damage to the moon, its slow rotation and orbit, it has never realized the war is over. On this pass, for the first time, it has detected radio wave transmissions from Proxtree. Because it does not recognize them, it assumes the softs are still active. Its transmission to the planet, I would assume, was some sort of a check beacon 
to see if it should continue its mission. Jim, let's return to the ship and blast this place to destroy its weapons. Doctor, this moon is a god to the people down there. If we destroy it, we will violate the Prime Directive. Spock is right, Bones. Spock, what are the chances that we could decode the transmission and send a stop code to the base? In trinary or decimal? Spock! 1.327 million to one. Provided the archaeological studies about Luca's languages are correct, our other option is to get into this base and see if we can bring the computers down. Alright, well, that's not good. Mr. Spock, see what you can do about that other keypad. Okay, they need another code. Will the uh, same code work? That did not work, Captain. It is probable this lock also uses a number of some significance. Well, the only other significant number we have is um, that Scythe is the 17th letter of their alphabet, and 17 in base 3 is 1, 2, 2. Fascinating. If the Federation language studies were correct, the ideograph for the word Scythe in the Lucas language is the 17th symbol in their alphabet that corresponds with 122 in base 3. You see another chamber. Sensor readings? Nothing to report, Captain. Any other security measures? Nothing happens. Nope. Okay. Let's walk in. Captain, we have a cure for the computer virus. Well done, Uhura. I modified Control C to exclusively attack the Lucre virus. They annihilated each other, Captain. Fascinating, Lieutenant. The Klingons aren't going to be happy to learn that they helped us. How about the phasers and tractor beams? We may get the tractor beams online in time, Captain. I'm afraid even the backup phaser transmission codes were affected. We could destroy some missiles manually, but if this complex decides to launch more than 10 missiles at a time... Understood. The ball is in our court. We'll give it our best shot. Kirk out. Alright, so... Primary mission objective, limit missile launches to 10 at a time. Secondary objective is to just disable the base completely. You are in a corridor that connects to three other chambers. This door appears to be very solid. This panel is designed to receive an ID card to make the door open. This doorway leads to another area of the complex. You are in a corridor that connects to three other chambers. James Kirk seems relieved by the good news from his ship. So far, this mission has been boring from a medical standpoint. Spock, deep in thought, analyzes the Lucre computers. As soon as this mission is over, Ensign Mosher is going to write his sister who serves on board Pegasus Science Station and gloat about everything he's seen. <laughs> this doorway leads back to the security lock and outside. This machinery is incredible! Are all your landing missions this much fun? I might never leave this place. When I retire from Starfleet, I'm going to write one heck of an autobiography. Fascinating, Doctor. I look forward to reading it. Well, that way I can finally get someone to listen to me. I don't think you'll ever retire from Starfleet, McCoy. Please allow me to concentrate, Captain. At least the Enterprise is safe. Unless the computers decide to send more powerful viruses to the Enterprise. Then we're just going to have to prevent that. Man, if only these people had a firewall. Like our rings, Mr. Spock. This panel has a slot in it rather than a keypad. The slot bears traces of triphosphorus silver, and power is currently running to it. I am recording the pattern of this lock into my tricorder. Okay. This door is made from remarkably dense alloys. Even our most powerful phaser rifle or welder would not be able to penetrate it. The thing must be almost as tough as a starship hull. Indeed, Ensign, and considerably thinner. A remarkable achievement in metallurgical engineering. Take note of that data, Mr. Spock. Maybe we can uh, pass it along to Starfleet engineers. Make some improvements. Circuits and atmosphere pumps are hidden in the walls. Make some, our, some improvements in our starships. Nothing to report. Uh, Nothing to report. Circuits and atmosphere pumps are hidden in the walls. Circuits and at... Circuits and at... Okay. Let's 
is nothing to report. All right, McCoy, we still doing good on the uh, cosmic radiation front? All readings are normal. The structure seems to be protecting us from the cosmic rays. Okay. Then, uh, well, let's start exploring. Can't say I like the decor. The Lukers did not leave behind many examples of their architecture. I can see why. This is an ancient laser drill. Captain, with the 3K AG content of the surface rocks and the tricorder scan of the pattern inside the lock, I believe the laser drill can be used to fashion the ID card needed to open the sealed door in the other chamber. Interesting theory, Mr. Spock. You look but see nothing of note. You look but see nothing of... These are display panels for the laser drill. This is a laser drill control panel. A closed box sits on the floor. This room looks like it was once used for some type of mining operation. wonder if they are expanding the base or if they are actually using this as a purely mining operation. This room looks like... You look but see nothing of... Ensign Mosier scouts for signs of trouble, as well as glancing at the great-looking laser drill. James T. Kirk, captain of the USS Enterprise. Dr. McCoy again wonders why he even came along. Mr. Spock puzzles over the illogical design of some of these circuits. This technology is cruder and less efficient than the rest of the complex, Captain. Why was I even brought down on this mission, Jim? I'm a doctor, not a welder. You're right. This is a mess. Looks like a museum piece to me, Captain. This is one heck of a museum, Ensign. Still a mess, though. Mr. Spock, tricorder readings. Unlike the surface rocks, the ore here is unremarkable. The drill is unremarkable, except its aiming component is corroded and frozen in place. A storage box of some kind. I detect no dangerous substances. The mine shaft was drilled out of the lunar rock by a laser device similar to the one mounted in the ceiling. The mine shaft was drilled. These are display panels for the laser. I used the key card pattern scanned from the lock to program the drill. It should now be able to make a template of the key card in the rock. Excellent, Mr. Spock. Now can we uh, see if there's anything in the box? This box contains old wire and connectors. Nothing to report. All right, well, let's grab. What do we get? A length of wire with some sort of connector at each end. You look but see nothing. All right, Mr. Spock, see what you can do about the computer. So we have a choice of uh, one, three, or let's see, that one's going to be nine, I think. Yeah, one, three, or nine. The laser drill has cut a template for the key card in the stone. Okay. Nothing to report. Well then, why don't we uh, put the rocks there with the 3K G content that Mr. Spock mentioned? Weird that they would uh, make key cards out of rocks, but all right, get out of there, Kirk. And then Mr. Spock. Mine shaft was. Dr Let's uh. This is a key card made from the triphosphorate silver rock. Nothing to report. Alright, well, let's grab it. Alright. 
A duplicate of the pass card you made from triphosphate silver. Alright, well I think that's all we really had to do in here. So let's walk back into the central room. Let's see what's down here. Oh, we can't. Alright, uh... Or how are things doing? Nothing new to report, Captain. Okay, well, let's use the card in the slot. And that seems to have unlocked the room. This door leads to another chamber. Mr. Spock, tricorder rings. Nothing to report, Captain. This appears to be the brain of Scythe. There are two identical but isolated computers that communicate with a third, which controls the launch of missiles. The control center for the base. Computers and nuclear missiles fill the room. Missiles of death and destruction. The Luker believed that you could never have enough of them. This computer is marked with the last letter of the Luker alphabet. This computer is marked with the first letter of the Luker alphabet. The Alpha and the Omega, huh? Missiles of death and... This computer controls the launch of missiles. It is directly controlled by the other computers. This door is marked with a radiation hazard symbol. Captain James T. Kirk, fingering his communicator, wonders if anything else is happening aboard his ship. The control center for the... Dr. McCoy takes several deep sighs and closes his eyes. These instruments of war make Spock uncomfortable, but he says nothing. Ensign Mosier awaits orders. The control I center... I guess we can't uh, look at that symbol on the ground. Thoughts, everyone. I don't have anything to say right now, Bones. These warheads are not a very efficient delivery system, Captain. Who needs efficiency when the end of the world is everywhere around here? Curb your emotions, Doctor. They serve no constructive purpose here. There's nothing constructive about this place, Spock. It's an obscenity. I wish I hadn't seen any of this. Sometimes it's useful to confront the dark side of our nature, that which we might become. No intruders, Captain. I think everyone died a long, long time ago. I wonder what caused it. For people with emotions, Ensign, there are many things that can cause hatreds. And each new hatred breeds more hatred and makes the path of peace harder to find. It's easy to say when you're not involved personally, Mr. Spock. But when people have treated you like a second-class being because you were different, hate can become the only thing they can't take away from you. That is what started most of the firestorms of history. Well, gentlemen, here's one fire we can put out. Let's go to work. He's got some uh, very strong feelings about that. Let's see, can we, um... I just want to... Can we look at these control panels? No. This door is marked with a... McCoy? All readings are normal. The structure seems to be protecting us from the cosmic rays. What about that radiation source? There's nothing there required. Are you going to tell me about that? Where are our things on the ship? Nothing to report, Captain. Fuck. Tricord readings. Readings indicate an extremely high radiation level beyond those doors. It would be fatal to proceed beyond them. Okay, so let's not do that. All three of the computers in this room are fully operational. Excellent. All three of the computers... A crude uranium-235 nuclear device with lithium-beryllium shells to increase heavy particle fallout. Crude, but effective. Well, let's start interfacing with the computer. This computer directly controls the missile launch system. There is no way to interface with it directly. But the other two computers are accessible. This computer is functional and performing an average 1.2 million operations per second. This computer is functional and performing an average 0.75 million operations per second. Sounds like that second computer is slower. These warheads are not a very efficient delivery system, Captain. Who needs efficiency when the end of the world is everywhere around here? Curb your emotions, Doc. There's nothing can. Okay, we've heard that before. Alright, so 
Mr. Spock, let's see what you can do. This computer cannot be accessed directly. It is controlled by the other two computers. Okay. Welcome to Side Operations Center, Alpha Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 3.21 hours suggested. That base three or base ten? wrong with the computers. They may be twins, but they are not identical. It appears they are out of sync, Captain. I have to assume the Alpha unit has a virus, which is using up an incredible amount of computing time. They report different optimum launch times, which is right. Given the elliptical orbit and the range at which they will pass Proxtree, the Omega unit is correct, but the window is very narrow. A variation of minutes will mean the missiles run out of fuel and fall harmlessly into the sun. Can you reprogram the Lucas computer to give us that time, Mr. Spock? Reprogramming an old alien computer is not simple, Captain. The odds against success are 10,221 to 1 against. Too bad all Omega here couldn't just take a sick day and miss the firing. Because the two machines are isolated, the virus did not spread from one to the other. If we could only bridge them. So, I noticed uh, his odds were a little similar to the uh, 99 that is holy to the Lukers, and that would be 106 to 1 in base 3. So not bad. So we need to bridge these computers together. That way we can infect the other with the virus. Now, my understanding was... This computer is marked with the last letter of... So that's the Omega. This computer is marked with the first letter of the Luker Alpha. And that's the Alpha. Now they said that the Alpha unit was infected with the virus, but... This computer is fun. This computer is functional. Oh, okay, that makes sense. This I was thinking this one's doing less, but they're saying that the virus is using up more of the settings. So, uh, let's... How much, uh... So I think that one says one hour, and this one was three hours? Give or take? Welcome to Side Operations Center. Yeah, so we need to get the virus to spread and they're isolated specifically for this purpose although honestly you would normally have three computers I think feeding one so that way you have backup so let's uh let's get these computers connected The connector snaps into place. This computer is functional and performing an average 1.2 million operations per second. This computer is functional. Okay, so we haven't transmitted the virus yet. Let's see if there's anything we can do here to, uh, to speed that process up. Welcome to Side Operations Center, Alpha Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 3.21 hours suggested. Alright, now, Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock, why don't you take a look at those computers? Welcome to Side Op Damn it. Alright. Can you, uh, get this virus going, Mr. Spock? Side Operations Center, Omega Unit. Estimated time to optimal launch range is 1.54 hours. Adjusted. The launched missiles will run out of fuel before they reach Proxtree. They will drift into the sun and burn up. Excellent. Kirk to Enterprise, how are the transporters, Scotty? They're operational again, Captain. We're ready to bring you back at any time. 
bring us home. We can leave that relic of war in the past where it belongs now. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Proxima 3 and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. Hard to believe that Earth came so close to the brink itself. Vulcans too. Both in the end looked into the abyss and came to the only logical conclusion. Logic? Humans? I'm dreaming, Jim. Sometimes it is harder and braver to make peace rather than war. Sounds like emotion had its part to play in a positive sense, too. I don't know about you, but I'd like to bid an emotional goodbye to Alpha Proxima myself. Take us out of orbit, Mr. Sutter. Glad we can finally leave that missile base. Can you imagine what it'd be like living on Earth if, say, the U.S. and or Russia and or China had turned the moon into a missile base and living under that? I mean, you thought ICBMs and SLBMs were bad. In any case, let's see if we can look up any of the uh, other stuff. Topic not oh, we can't look up. Topic 3KG. Um, let's see, can we look up? Topic not okay, I think that's how it's spelled. Topic I, I can't see oh no. Uh Topic Topic it Looks like I can't look up that uh, virus that Klingon virus that uh Uhura used. Although I uh, didn't have much time to write that one down once I saw it, so I could be writing it down wrong and then putting it wrong, but, um, I think I don't see anything else we can put in. We couldn't put in you. Topic. Nuclear. Topic. No weapons. Topic. No WMDs. Topic. Yeah, nothing like that, so. Top. So with that, I think that will bring this episode to a close. So thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and we'll see you then.